you mind if I? I don't want to. You, know, you climb all couch. over that. You're all right. fine. I was gonna say. I'd and we can shampoo shoes. it. You go for it. <laughs> okay. You do whatever you need to do. People are always. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> put your feet up yeah. there. Put your shoes mm -hmm. up there. Doesn't well, thank you all for coming here to the Pride Center of Vermont on a kind of a cloudy and rainy day, but uh, lots of light, and I saw the sun trying to peek out. So, so welcome, uh, so welcome to the Pride Center, and uh, thank you all for giving us this time to talk to you about what it is that we do here. Yeah. And what's on your mind today? What is on my mind today? Uh, everything. Uh, the Pride Center is, uh, we're gearing up for our annual Pride event in September. We're in the early stages of planning. We're at that point where we're wondering um, how many volunteers we need and what kinds of activities we're going to have. If there's anyone out there who wants to be a part of uh, planning Pride, get a hold of us. Uh, if you want to volunteer for Pride, make sure you communicate that to us. We, we have a job for you that day. Uh, we're also involved in planning uh, the run. We're going to bring back uh, our run again this year. So um, it's the Stride to Pride and uh, we're looking at the routes and that sort of a thing. And uh, so if you're a runner or a runner wannabe uh, who is interested in maybe doing the fun run or the fun walk, make sure you put September 9th on your calendar uh, for the run and September 10th as the date uh, that we will all come together as one community and celebrate pride. That's great. And is this going to be your first run and, and as a director here? Now this year's, um, this year's run is going to be a little bit of a reinvention. We've done the run before. Uh, I think we've done it a couple of times before and then we, we uh, kind of put it up on the bookshelf so we could retool it. You know, there's so many runs in the area. We wanted to make sure that our run stood out, that it was a memorable experience for all of those individuals involved. Uh, so this is um, this will be my first run uh, with the Pride Center of Vermont, but it's not the first run for the Pride Center in, in general. Uh, but what we're hoping to do is um, kind of grow this. We're talking about making a four mile this year instead of a 5K, since there are so many 5Ks out there. Uh, and we're talking about the future of this particular run. Where will it go from here? Will it remain a four mile? Will it grow to, to a half marathon? We'll just have to see. <coughs> I'm sorry, I may have to get water. Is that all right? Yeah. <coughs> you know, I came up um, uh, in March, first part of March, uh, for my uh, formal in-person interview, and it was uh, um, multi-series interview so I was here for a couple of days and uh, a lot of people asked me so what did you think when you when you got here you know Burlington I come from a college town uh, so Burlington reminds me a lot of my hometown which is Fayetteville Arkansas Fayetteville's a few more folks we have a population of 75,000 uh, with a student population of 27,000 so it's a little bigger um, but Burlington reminds me a whole lot of Fayetteville uh, and, uh, and it has that same soul and that same vibe and just that same realness. And that's what really attracted me to Burlington was you could, you could feel the soul and the realness of the people just walking down the street. And uh, so that was kind of my first impression and that's the impression that so far has stayed. Um, and uh, you know, just the more I get to know about the area, of course, the more beauty I see and, and the deeper that um, that soul seems to be, you know, folks here really care. They care about their neighbors, their friends, and they care about their city, and I like that a whole lot. <laughs> Tell us, who is, who is your companion here? Okay, this, uh, this little, uh, as they say, let's let sleeping dogs lie. This little sleeping dog is Jenny. Uh, Jenny's a seven-year-old uh, lab. Jenny's um, a retired service dog. She's part of my former life. Uh, when I uh, worked at a service dog organization, she was one of the dogs in that program. And today she's retired. She still likes to do the things that she knows how to do. She knows how to pick up things you drop, open doors, that kind of stuff. She likes doing that. She's just a little slower. She's a little older and, you know, she's at that age where she pulls muscles and strains ligaments and so now she's retired and, and just kind of enjoying life as a regular dog. So uh, beside you you have a, a, a volume of one of the earliest papers 
here in Burlington. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the out in the mountains. You know, uh, of course, the the volume that I grabbed happened to cover the time. Well, what is this? This is eighty six through eighty nine. I graduated high school in eighty five, so eighty six through eighty nine. That's sort of my early coming out days. And so when I flip through this, I think back to to the time when I was first coming out, and it it's it was a different world back then in so many ways, but in other ways, we still have the same fight on our hands. And so uh, it's with mixed emotion that I look through archives. You see how far we've come, and then sometimes you think we're still we're still marching against the same stuff, and we shouldn't have to be marching against the same old stuff. Uh, but you know we do. That's the reality, and we will carry on and keep fighting until uh, until we. Uh, win full equality. Susan, I can see just by talking to you that you are very accessible. You must have people coming in and talking to you and telling you uh, all kinds of things that are very close to their heart. And you, you are accessible, so you are able to, to help them and to guide them. I, I've been working in the nonprofit world since I was 18, and I started out at a crisis intervention center answering a hotline. And, uh, and ever since those days, I, I am an individual who can hear a person's story uh, and hear the details of their story, hear whatever it is that they want to share uh, without judgment. And so people do see me as someone they can talk to. I have a policy of accessibility. I want, uh, I take it very seriously. You know, there are so many people out there who would love to be doing what I'm doing, and I feel blessed to be chosen as a representative of the LGBTQ community. And so I feel a responsibility to be accessible, uh, and I take that very seriously. And so when, when people want to sh convey concerns, share ideas, or just talk and get to know me as um, a member of the LGBTQ family, um, I, I'm here. Um, give me a ring. My, sometimes my calendar is kind of full and we have to, to finagle a way to get folks scheduled in, but I am an individual who wants to hear from my community and the people that I serve. Yeah, that's a big problem is people, we who feel that we're not listened to or that our concerns aren't heard mm -hmm. or, or that we're, we're just talking in the wind yeah. and to come here and to have somebody listen is very important. Absolutely. You know, it's making a difference means you have to speak up. Sometimes you have to keep speaking until you do find someone who will listen. Uh, and sometimes folks are listening and they just don't know how to convey it. Um, but, uh, but it's important to not get discouraged and just to keep reaching out and to keep talking. Uh, until you start to feel like uh, you're moving your ideas and your thoughts and your concerns forward. And to feel comfortable here too. It's, oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a space where you can you can feel at home. Well I hope so. You know an LGBTQ community center uh, is a home for so many people in our family. Uh, and when you think that's one of the challenges we face as an LGBTQ community center our family is so diverse. We have people of different life experiences, different ages, different belief systems. You know, you just, we're a little microcosm of, of, uh, of our country, I guess you could say. And so it is a, it's, uh, it's something that we have to ask ourselves every day. Are we providing a center, both a facility and services and programs, that meets the needs of our community. And we want folks to know this is your home, this is your community center, uh, and we want you to play a role in it, and we want you to be very comfortable when you're here. Um, now, we're in a, we're sitting in a youth space currently, right? Um. This, um, you know, the, the uh, Pride Center of Vermont has a wide variety of programming. We have the facility, um, and at, at our center in and of itself, we have uh, a library we have where you can check out books and videos. We have a computer room. We have meeting space for the variety of community organizations that uh, meet here. Uh, and then we have um, Safe Space, which is our um, uh, program that provides advocacy and support and assistance to individuals who have experienced sexual uh, violence, domestic violence, uh, and hate violence. 
We have a health and wellness program where we provide free HIV testing uh, and uh, do a, a, a variety of programs that are designed to help us live uh, healthier lives. We have a running program. We have a smoking cessation program. Um, I don't think they call themselves PFLAG anymore, but we have <laughs> a support group for the friends and family and loved ones of individuals who are LGBTQ. We have um, uh, the Transgender and Gender Non-Conforming Community Project. Uh, they have planning meetings and then they also have like trans town halls and, and support groups that meets here. Of course, that's part of the center's programming. Mm -hmm. We have a lot going on. I mean, we have our office hours, but outside of those office hours, there's a lot that happens here. <laughs> there's always, it seems like every night, even though we're closed, we have something going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a living positive group for individuals who are HIV positive. Uh, we have a 12-step meeting for individuals who are dealing with addiction, so there, there is just a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and most of our information is online. And then, of course, you know, we have a variety of social programming that happens uh, outside of the center. We have uh, a group of, uh, that meets called Momentum that meets every week that's for LGBTQ individuals 40 and over. Uh, we have a group that meets for individuals uh, who are living with disabilities. Um, if you're looking for it, we either have it or are interested in starting it or would talk to you about starting it. So um, to check us out sometime. We have a lot of programs that happen both here at the center and out in the community. Uh, and we're working on some ideas to take our programming and services out uh, across the state to reach our LGBTQ family that lives in some of the more rural areas of Vermont. Yeah, do you have any uh, connections to um, LGBT spaces uh, in the, the more rural areas? We work with a couple of the programs. Now, um, what is there's um, There's the LGBTQIA Alliance of Vermont, the Rainbow Umbrella. Um, what else is there? We do, but I don't remember them all. You're asking a newbie. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can make just make a statement about, you know, um, one of the things that, um, that we have done in the past and will continue to do uh, is to work in collaboration with the LGBTQ organizations across Vermont uh, to make sure that our family as a whole is served regardless of where they live. Mm -hmm. cool. There you go. <laughs> and we come back again. Is that the part? You know, one of the things that's happening here, this is um, a pivotal year for the uh, Pride Center. Uh, we are um, talking about, you know, this is our 20th anniversary. We're talking about what the next 20 years will look like. Uh, we are talking about doing a community survey uh, to find out, you know, kind of what are the demographics of our community here? Um, what are the issues? our community deals with and what are the needs that they have and what do they what do they want from the Pride Center um, and we're also going to do a little bit of a physical refresh we're talking about you know cleaning the Pride Center up a little pot giving it a little polish uh, maybe repainting and and who knows what else we're going to do just given you know giving uh, the center a fresh look for the next 20 years so we do hope that you all will come back learn about some of the uh, new programmings that we're offering and uh, and look at uh, the refresh space thanks Susan you made us feel at home thank you <laughs> I'm glad y'all came <laughs> it is kind of a cool little spot isn't it you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter, and our website is pridecentervt.org. Make sure to check it out, sign up for our newsletter, and stay in touch with us, and, um, and keep abreast of what's going on here at this organization.